it's important that we see the good part of mothers, the benefit of having a mother. I want to thank God today. I want to celebrate all mothers and those who are yet to be mothers. I hope that by the time we celebrate mothers today, you'll be looking forward to having a mother yourself. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And of course, you know how Christians do it. You know, marriage for their mother. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 So we want to thank the Lord for, for his uh, awesome blessings upon our lives. Starting with the mother. Usually, every Mother's Day, I take the opportunity to talk about my mother. You know, all the good things about my mother. Why? Because I'm the one standing here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, but I know everybody who have opportunity, wants to have opportunity to say something about their mother. And uh, this year I said I will, I will just not do that this year. Except that, I just want to remind you guys that my mother used to make this wonderful, beautiful, tasty soup when I was young. And that soup seems to come out only when I was sick. So I happen to be sick all the time. Because right, this would be a special soup for me. That was how good my mom was. And uh, we thank God for her, thank God for you. I know you have stories about how good your mother was to you or is to you. Never. Never neglect the opportunity to be close to your mother and enjoy your mother. Amen? Amen. Never neglect that. It's really all about family. No matter what we're doing in this planet, it's about family. And our mothers are the bedrock of families. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I'm going to go quickly uh, use the scriptures just to give us uh, a good insight to what mothers are and how the Bible sees mothers. We have a we just read a scripture this morning from Proverbs chapter 31. You know, that proverb talked about uh, a virtuous woman, and uh, it talks about uh, a good wife and all that. But when you read through that scripture, you find that it's talking about a mother the way uh, God would like to see a picture of a mother. And uh, we live in a world where we have all kinds of cultures, traditions, and whatever, how we are fed, how we grow up. But for the sake of what we do in the church, we have to look at things from the, you know, from the eye of a, a believer. Praise the Lord. So this is the reason we are going to talk about mother using that uh, Proverbs 31. Just give us a little insight to how uh, the Lord uh, appreciates mothers. Uh, this mother we see, uh, first I want us to start by looking at what he said. This was the mother of King Lemuel, King Lemuel, and this mother was doing something to that king, that young king was trying to teach him something. And from this we learn about a virtuous woman. And I want to point out uh, real quickly a couple of things that she said from Proverbs 31 verses 14 and 15. Proverbs 31, verses 14 and 15. Now, normally I would put this on the screen, but lately I stopped doing that because I said, you know, we all have cell phones now. We call them smartphone. And uh, I say, your phone is not smart until it has a Bible in it. If you don't have a Bible in your phone, it's a stupid, foolish phone. It's not smart. Put a, put a Bible in it. It's free. Praise the Lord. Amen. So wherever you go, you go with the Word of God. Proverbs 31, 14 to 15 says, She is like a merchant ship. She bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night, and giveth me to her household and a portion to her maidens. This is a true mother. The mother that is always trying to take care of the family. Mother that is always working hard to take care of them. The Bible says that she is like a merchant ship. The merchant ship is a ship that is always going. It's always working. It's always whatever you put on that ship, you will carry it and get to the port that you're sending it to. That is what the scripture used to describe the mother. She's always ready to carry, to carry for the family. She's always ready to go wherever, wherever it takes. 
as far as she could, she would go just to make sure that her household is well taken care of. You know, some of us men, we are, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. We are, you know, we are not very, uh, when it comes to like uh, worrying about things, how to make sure everything is in order, you know, <laughs> I better slow down before I start saying things here. Praise the Lord. You know, some men will say, you know, you just, you know, wrong with watching TV and putting your shoes all over the place in the house. And, you know, the mother will say, keep it in the right place. And you're like, there's nothing wrong with it, just leave it there. You know, mothers are very particular. They want to make sure things are clean. They want to make sure there's food on the table. I want to make sure that uh, the man doesn't just lie down and not go to work because tomorrow somebody needs to eat, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But they don't stop there. The Bible says they care very much for their household and they don't just care, they are comforters, they comfort. When we are young, we used to feel like sometimes our mothers were too hard on us. But the older you get, you begin to appreciate your mother. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You begin to appreciate your mother. The scripture further tells us that mothers actually have ministry from God. Mothers have ministries from God. Their first ministry is their family, their children. They are teachers, they are to teach their children. The scripture says, bring up the child the way he should go. When he grows up, he will not depart from it. Mothers have that special duty of, because they are close to the baby from day one, so they are always speaking to the baby, they are always talking to them. And I don't know any mother that says, you know, this baby, I want you to amount to nothing. I'm going to show you how to waste your life. You know, with this baby, I want to make sure that you are the worst baby in this planet. I don't think mothers do that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I think they are always looking to help their baby to achieve the best. And we say, what better place to be uh, than to be in the Word of God as a mother so that when you minister, because you will minister to your child, when you minister, you minister from a biblical point of view. So mothers are the ministers of the children. God calls them to minister. This is why they are teachers. Praise the Lord. And I say, we see in the scriptures many mothers who show that uh, uh, ministry uh, calling. One of them was Hannah, Hannah Elkanah's uh, wife the mother of Samuel, one of the best high priests of Israel. The book of 1 Samuel, the Bible tells us that Hannah was a, a wife of Elkanah, and Elkanah has another wife called Peninnas. Peninnas and Peninnas had babies, and Hannah didn't. So Hannah prayed to God, kept praying to God for a baby, for a baby, for a baby. They would go to Jerusalem every year according to the uh, traditions of the Jews, to go and worship God. In one occasion, they went and she was there praying and crying to God at the altar. Then the then high priest named Eli, or Eli, whatever we want to call him, Rabbi said that he saw her and was like, what is wrong with this woman? Early in the morning, you're already drunk. That showed how deep she was in prayer because when he came close, she, he found out that she wasn't drunk, but she was just focused on God while praying. And eventually God granted her her request and she had a son called Samuel. When the Bible says when she had the baby, she made up her mind that she was gonna turn this baby back to God. And that, that was what she did. When this baby was of age, she brought the baby to God and left him in the house of God. And basically was ministering to the baby through the priest. Eventually, this guy grew up and became arguably one of the high, best high priests of Israel. But Hannah did her part. She did her ministry, which was to take this baby 
and bring that baby up in the way of the Lord. When that scripture in, John, in the Proverbs 22 verse 6 said, bring up the child the way he should go. When he goes up, will not depart from it. That scripture is not just talking to Christians, it's talking to everybody because we all bring up our children the way they should go. Whether we are Christians or not. So if you bring up your child, in, you know, like in your house, every word you, you speak is a curse. You're cursing somebody up. You're teaching that child to be cursing people. You know, if uh, you bring up your child to be nice to people because of your example, you're teaching the child to be nice to people. If you bring the child to be a, a child of God, you know, by making God important in your life, you're teaching that child to be make God important in his or her life. So we all, whether we have the scriptures or not, we all bring up our children the way they ought to go. So when the child grows up and you turn around and say, Boom, what happened to you? Everything that I did, look at you now. Well, so that's when we do this. Look at, look at. See, three is pointing at you, praise the Lord. <laughs> I don't find that the child. Maybe you should go back and look that back. You know, those times what happened or what. I'm not saying that there are not some people that you know do their own thing, but on the average, what we sow has a lot to do with what happens. As a popular or uh, a known Jewish saying, give me your child before as a baby, at the age of seven you can have your child. In other words, by that time, you already laid some foundation in that baby. Baby has now, you've already shaped the life of that baby, the foundation. So Sam, uh, Hannah did what she had to do from 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 27 to 28. The scripture says, For this child I prayed, and the Lord had given me my petition, which I asked of him, Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord, as long as he liveth, he shall be lent to the Lord, and he, he, and he worships the Lord there. Now that is, that is what a godly mother will do. A godly mother will know that there is no education for a child that is better than first God first. Amen? Amen. God first. When you can do God first, believe me, you have done most of the work. If you can truly do God first in the life of your children. I'm not talking about uh, looking for a Christian school, just every morning you dump your child in Christian school and go. No, they want to see you to live in that Christian lifestyle. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. They want to see you doing that too. That is what God the mother does. And we thank God. And you that are here, I thank God for you because I know God is somewhere in you. You have a relationship somehow. That is why you are here today to hear this. So I thank God for you. God first, like I said. Hannah put God first in the life of her son. She said, this child I'm going to send back to the Lord and I want him to sit at the foot of this enemy. The high priest, that he, she, he will learn the way of God. Instantly, Eli had two children who didn't learn from him. But Samuel, who learned from him, became the shining light of Israel. And the children of Eli wasted away. Eventually, they both died because of the sins they were committing. That will not be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So we want to thank our God today for all mothers. We want to take some time and pray and just give thanks to God for mothers. I don't know what your relationship with your mother is. If your mother is still around, you should cultivate, do all you can to cultivate a beautiful relationship with your mother. I said I won't talk about my mother, but I want to say one more thing. When I was in secondary school, that's high school, middle school and high school to you, Americanas, we went to public school, uh, 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 boarding school. I never lacked any good thing. 
because my mother made sure that I had money with me all the time. To the point one day my dad said, well, how come you never asked me for money? How come you never asked me for money? I said, oh, wow, okay, so I asked him for money. He screamed, he said, my goodness, who do you think you are? <laughs> he said, this is the most expensive student he has ever seen. Because <laughs> I asked him the way mom used to give me, praise the Lord. <laughs> and I asked him, he was like, wow, what do you think you are doing in school? You are sent there to study, not to spend money. That was the last time I asked him for money. <laughs> that was the last time he also asked me to ask him for money. But I, I appreciate, before that, I didn't know that the money the, my mom was giving was a lot. I just had money, so I was enjoying myself. So I am very grateful. Like I said, I don't know what relationship you have with your mom. Whatever it is, if she's saying things to you and you feel offended, believe me, it's because she loves you. Praise the Lord. If you are a uh, young lady, someday you will have your own children in Jesus' name. If it's the will of the Lord for you, you have your own children and your children will appreciate you also. Right now, I want us to take a moment and pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Do you, can you get a song for me, please? I want us to take a moment and pray. And as we pray, and we also hope that... Uh, and a baby dedication people will show up. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 You are exalted above all the names. There is no like you.
don't give him time. Say, Father, I thank you. Thank you for making this woman my mother. I thank you, my Lord and my God. I thank you, O oh Lord. I want you now to begin to pray. Pray for the mothers around you. Just pray that the Lord will bless them and keep them strong. The Lord will make it righteous women. Righteous women. For the righteous woman is the one who loves the Lord. Is the one who cares for her children and her household. Is the one who teaches people the way of God. Is the one who blesses and does not destroy. Thank you for praying that the Lord will make the mothers you know by just women. Father, we thank you right now. I want you to pray for any mother that you know who is sick right now. Say, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. We pray for divine intervention in this mother's life. Some mothers are overwhelmed by stress. They are overwhelmed by stress, by all sorts of issues. Pray that the Lord will give them peace and eliminate that stress from them. Pray for divine healing. Say, Lord, heal this one. Oh, Lord, we pray your divine healing. Your divine healing. Father, we pray, any mother in this house right now who is overburdened by issues, whatever it is today, the Lord has the answer for your problem. The Bible says He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above what we ask or think. Say to Him, Lord, I trust, Father, I trust you. I know you can take care of this issue. I want to pray for you right now that somehow you will take your mind and your eyes off your problem and keep your eyes and your hearts on the Lord. And you will find that we serve a mighty God. This God is the God of creation. The Bible says he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above whatever we ask or think. This God can solve your problem, no matter what it is. Just one word from God and that issue will become nothing. Lord, I pray everyone under the sound of my voice, whether mother, daughter, son, father, man, Whatever you should have came into this place we pray for your divine intervention right now. We pray for your divine intervention. Yes, some have been worrying about financial problems. Lord, oh, that they may see that you can do for them what money and money cannot buy. Lord, I pray for the heart of everyone under the sound of my voice right now. Oh, I pray for divine visitation. Oh, Lord. When I say I've touched us, touch everyone in this place. Say the Barakasan. Pray against the spirit of fear right now. There is the spirit of fear in the heart of the people. Oh, so if you have a spirit of fear, I want you to know that God is able to remove that fear. Whatever is causing that fear and uncertainty in your heart. The Bible tells us that the Lord has not given us the spirit of fear, but love, power, and of a sound mind. 
I pray for the blessings of God upon your hearts and upon your life. That problem that you think is unsurmountable, that thing you are afraid of, you are asking God for. I pray that you will see that God will do it for you. So that your fear will be. I pray for the peace of God that supplies all understanding to come upon you right now. The joy of the Lord will saturate your heart.
you will not be reconciled to God because you love people. You will not be reconciled to God because you give tithes and offering. You will only be reconciled to God because you gave your life to Jesus Christ. Maybe that's why you are here today. Maybe God is giving you a chance to reconcile to Him. Now I'm not going to call anybody out. All I'm going to say is this is a moment of reconciliation. Maybe you have already reconciled your you know, Jesus is your Lord, but you haven't really been living the way you think you should. You know you should. Lord is calling upon you now and saying to you, return to your first love. Return to that right relationship with Christ. First, I want to offer you opportunity to give your life to Jesus. As we are still in attitude of worship and prayer, all you need to say to the Lord in your heart, just tell the Lord, I know I'm a sinner. And if you do that, you will not be alone. You have to say, all oh, have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There is no righteous, no, not one. But if you're willing to talk to the Lord right now and give your life to Him, you have to say, Jesus will forgive you your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And He will give you the right spirit, the spirit of the living God. And He will also bring you to the fold from the people of God. I want you to just take a moment and I say, Lord, forgive me my sins. I want the right relationship with my Creator right now. And as the scripture says, you are the only one who can save my life. So I yield my life to you, Jesus. We consign me to my Creator today. The Bible says, if you pray that simple prayer in your heart, that something special has happened in your life. Say you become a new creature. All things have passed away. Your sins in the past God will remember no more. That is the plan of the living God for you. Father, I thank you. Lord, I thank you that we can come forward into the throne of grace. We know you've never failed anyone in the past, and you will not start with us. So we give you glory, we give you praise, we give you adoration. We bless your holy name. We exalt you today. We exalt you today. We exalt you today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I want us just as we round up our prayer. Just say to the Lord, fill me with the right spirit. Fill me with the right spirit, O oh Father. Fill me with the right spirit, the spirit of the living God. The Bible says, when we receive the spirit, we will be filled with power. Power to live the right way. Even the power to trust God when we have problems. I want you to say to the Lord, fill me with your joy. Fill me with your joy and pray. One of the greatest problems in the world is people who have no joy in their lives. They are forever searching and never coming to the place of joy. Money cannot buy joy. Only the Lord can give true joy. Material success does not bring joy. Only the Lord can bring true joy. 
ask him to fill you with his joy today, to show you what true joy is about. Now I want you to ask him to fill you with, uh, with his peace. Fill you with his peace. The Bible says that, that we should come to the Lord with thanksgiving, prayer and supplication. And that we should not be anxious for anything. Then the peace of God as a all understanding will be in our hearts through Christ Jesus. Ask him for divine peace. When you have the peace of God, you will not be stressed out, no matter what you are dealing with. When you have the peace of God, you will know how to trust God, no matter what situation. My prayer for you today is that because you have chosen to fellowship with us today, that the peace of God will settle with you. And this week, even when the enemy comes against you like a flood, you will feel the peace of God. You will remember the peace of God. You will remember that God is greater than that enemy. Remember that there is a wall of fire around you from the heaven. Lord, grant them the peace of God and pray today. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a clap offering. Let's give the Lord a clap of you. Amen. Amen. We'll...